Hello, hello, welcome back. Another painting, another day, and another video in the series of fundamentals of art rage, uh, fundamentals of digital painting. And this one is, is really just all about how to save your work. And, um, you know, it's funny, like I, I think I'll teach a class and, and I will do all this complex stuff with layers and brush design and creating their own brushes and, and all the students working on all this cool stuff. And then we get to the end of the day and they don't know how to save their work. And I think, whoa, that's actually something that I need to teach. But instead of just jumping in and teaching it, I thought it would be fun just to do a little warm up painting. So this painting probably took me about 24 minutes, 25 minutes to do um, this morning. And I was really just trying to focus on um, using big brush strokes because it's another thing that I want to continue to encourage in my students is that when you're painting or when you're drawing, you're not the the best thing you can do is let go of this concept of like, hey, I'm drawing features or hey, I'm drawing a nose or hey, I'm drawing um, a piece of hair. You know, instead, what we're drawing is light and dark. We're drawing shapes of light. We're drawing shapes of shadow, shapes of midtone. We're drawing um, things with our brush. A brush is really cool. A brush is not um, if you're trying to just kind of detail features and you're trying to really like um, articulate with with careful precision, a brush is just like a terrible pencil. You know what I mean? It's like, why would you even use it? A brush is not um, supposed to be like a terrible pencil. And it's supposed to be its own unique mark making tool. And in order to to do painting, you need to embrace that and to really feel what it can do. Get your brush big and let yourself try to think of um, of that tool as, as, as like it in, it, in terms of its efficiency potential. How can you most efficiently and dramatically and with confidence lay in a color, um, lay in a shape, lay in a tone, lay in a value? and let those values and colors crash into each other and let those edges emerge and that that will be your painting you know so in this painting it's kind of wonderfully easy and freeing to paint that way you know you just focus on big brush strokes and capture the values and there's like i mean there's almost no artistry to it it's just like playing around you know and i think that's a that's a virtue of painting that way is it's it's kind of like artless in a way you know you're just just playing around having fun and, and going big so um that's why this can happen so fast i mean i finished like covering the canvas in like 10 minutes and the rest of it was just kind of dinking around with stuff um you can see right here i'm adding a new i added a new layer and i'm using the blend mode overlay and i'm using some just custom brushes to push the highlights and it's a way of creating a little extra drama in the lighting situation without having to repaint everything um, <clears throat> I do it all the time with overlay on a separate layer. It's one of my favorite sort of tricks. And with digital, um, there's tricks, you know, and you got to use them. And just like with, tr with traditional art, there's tricks and you got to use them. I mean, people suspect that even uh, the great masters of the past, like the Northern Renaissance painters like uh, uh, Vermeer, um, like they, they probably use some some like tracing devices and stuff like that for their proportions and it's like who cares you know their their paintings are amazing there's tricks everybody's got tricks using grids is a trick using um measuring sticks and using all kinds of stuff is a, is a trick uh and i think you just have to sort of draw the line wherever you feel comfortable but i definitely think you know like that that tracing is probably not very helpful for you as an artist so i would advise staying away from that but um for something like this, I'm just using the palette knife, uh, using a, a blend mode layer uh, with overlay. But the rest of it's just painted with with a big giant um, oil brush, and you can see the settings that I started with, and you can see the settings that I ended with. Um, I did use a couple of my custom brushes along the way, but that that was just you know for a couple pieces of hair or the eyelashes. But um, I wanted to talk about this. This is pretty important. So when you go to save your work, the first thing you want to do is go file and then save the project. That saves it as a PTG file. That saves it um, as, as the project file that you can come back to and use over and over again. But you can also, and this is how you get to look at your work outside of the app and, and how you share your work to your social media sites or how you send it to a print shop, is you need to save the painting as a JPEG. Um, the lossless versions of that are a PNG or a TIFF, but you need to check with what print shop you're using. You can also save as a, P, as a PDF and that, that 
that those are some of your better options than a JPEG. But JPEG is, is okay as long as you save it in the highest quality. But what I wanted to show you here is that I opened um, a new document and created a 1080 by 1080 pixel file that um, was 72 dots per inch. And that's, that's just basically like a perfect image size for like Instagram or social media. So I just say, I, I, I get file new, created that new document, 1080 by 1080 and 72 pixels per inch. And then I just took my exported JPEG from my previous painting, the one I did as a demo, and I opened it. I did file import as a layer. And what that did is it brings the artwork into this new document so then I can save it exactly the proportion it would need to be if I was posting it to our uh, Instagram. So that's all I got to say. Uh, hopefully that was helpful with saving. Hopefully you're having a good time painting and uh, thanks so much for checking out the channel. Best wishes.